stopping by the channel my name's Leah and we're gonna recap and review Real Housewives of I was about to say Atlanta <laughs> Beverly Hills this is season 12 episode 2 it was good it was a I, I give it a solid B it was a solid B so let's get into this episode so the episode opens up and we're at Dorit's house I think it's been like two or three days since the robbery PK is praising Dorit, saying how he's so impressed with how she's been able to stay calm and still be there for her family and for the kids. They also bring up the kids not um, being like weirded out that security is there and being calm, like and being pretty OK with it and being very adaptable to the situation. But the truth of the matter is, if they're not freaking out, their kids aren't going to freak out because that's what a lot of parents say. Like if you're calm and cool, your kids are normally going to be calm and cool because they're they know they're safe and protected. So Dorit ends up telling us this story about a bee, how she was like running around her house. Her daddy used to be in the war, like not obviously be in a war. I think he was in the war, but he used to be a, uh, a soldier. And he was explaining to her to like, you got to be calm and maintain and maintain a calm presence. And that's how you get out of dangerous situations. So the bee was chasing her. Somehow her daddy did that crouching tiger, hidden dragon and plucked the bee off the table once it calmed down to show her. I kind of didn't believe the story, but I got what she was going for. And she just wants to be back to her normal self. What I do find weird is that she was like so calm sitting in a room where supposedly she almost like uh, lost her life. Like, and a lot of people felt some type of way about that. And what's crazy is people have actually found the police reports where it states that like there was no weapon. But I'm gonna give her grace in the sense of like, when someone just breaks into your home, you gonna think anything that they have in their hands or on them is gonna be a weapon and, and they gonna try to take you out of here. So maybe she really didn't know if it was, um, you know, um, <laughs> like that people say a water gun since YouTube like to take away things on, on, on her bag. We don't we don't really know. We don't really know, but I'm gonna give the lady grace. So uh, we continue and there's like two episodes, not two, uh, two episodes, there's two scenes. There's Crystal and Sutton at the crepe cake place. So last season she brought that pancake cake. It's really multiple crepes laid on top of each other. And they're eating at this bakery where she got it from. It looked good. I thought it was that like jiggly cake that you always see on like um, Instagram and like TikTok that's made in like Japan and I think also China that's like really fluffy and like you can shake it and it jiggles. I would love to try that one day. But that's what I thought it was. But that's not what it is. It's a crepe cake and the lady who owns the restaurant or the bakery she brought out this peach cobbler cake for crystal and Sutton to try and it looked delicious like I would love to get a piece of that and so in this moment we have Sutton talking to crystal and talking to um Sutton's telling crystal about how she didn't know that Lisa Renna and Harry didn't know that she paid for the table she was like, had I known they didn't know that, I wouldn't have misspoken. Like, I would have like, kept that to myself. And I, the only thing I didn't like was Sutton tr still trying to be like, I like Lisa. I don't. I didn't do anything to hurt her. I was like, eh, girl, just own it. You like Lisa, but you, you're friends with Garcelle and you wanted to throw a dig and protect your friend because that's your friend. So, like, just own it. So then, um, juxtaposed to that is a scene with kyle and lisa renna we find out that kyle's halloween i said halloween like halloween like halloween i was gonna say halloween halloween movie is doing well i don't do horror movies but good for her doesn't halloween halloween has jason in it yeah halloween does have jason in it and then you know El, El night on elm street is freddy cougar so yeah halloween so um it's a halloween movie as y'all can tell i don't really do halloween <laughs> i don't do horror movies but like i had a, I, I know them i know them <laughs> so um sh the movie's doing well she i lets us know that she was asked back for the next movie that they're because they're resurging the the genre not the genre but the the movie series again like it's coming back so Lisa, not Kyle asks Lisa about how she feels about Sutton, like are her certain good. And then Lisa, I also think is lying. Like I didn't really believe the story of what Dorit was saying, but I definitely don't believe this story. How she was saying that Harry texts Sutton saying that, I don't know what you're trying to do Sutton, but this is the wrong road. But Sutton didn't text back. And one thing to me is like, I feel like Lisa sent that text because Harry doesn't seem like he cares about what goes on on the show. 
I remember um, Harry was on like a Watch What Happens Live episode and they asked him about um, about how he felt about Garcelle not thanking him for the bolognese sauce or hosting her birthday at Harry and um, Lisa's home. And Harry was confused, like he didn't even know that they had beef or that there was an issue. So I don't really think he cares. And if he does care, I don't really think he would go out his way of texting Sutton a text in that way. I think Lisa did it and she just wants to gloat about it. Cause, Cause I really feel like Lisa is the type of woman that would take her man's phone and start texting the side chick to get information or arguing with a girl in the DMs talking about my girl friends that I can't speak to you no more I she give me that energy but Lisa's still in her feelings about the whole situation the next thing we see is everybody getting ready for Harry's 70th birthday party I had to google how old Lisa was because Lisa kept saying the whole age gap but I guess Harry's 70 they've been married for 30 years which means they met when she was 40 Lisa is um 58 yeah, 58. So that means she was 28 when she met Harry. So I was like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. Lisa gives very much pick-me energy. She gave it throughout this whole entire episode, especially for this birthday. But the birthday was going, like, um, and like I said, everyone's getting ready for the birthday. I really didn't care too much for Lisa Rinna's yellow outfit. I feel like maybe if her hair was different, I would have liked it more. But I was just like, this ain't, I don't know. It just didn't do nothing for me. I did, however, think, Gar not Garcelle. I didn't like Garcelle's outfit. I thought Erica looked good. The whole turtleneck and the high hair, She, I thought she looked really pretty. One thing I'll say about Erica, she need to pressure wash that White House. I That's why I don't like White Houses. I do not like White Houses because it's so easy, easy for it to look dingy and dirty because it's white. And like it's outside. Outside is dirty. <laughs> also, I'm surprised that Mikey, which is her um, her director or her style director. I, I think that boy is a stylist. It's still there. Like, is Mikey her roommate? He's giving roommate, like, is, how much is she paying you, Mikey? Like, it's giving very much roommate tease. <laughs> but everybody's getting ready. We then show up to the actual hotel that we saw in season, not, I was gonna say season one, episode one. And one thing I, I clocked is, did y'all, like, Lisa did not have enough money to get a private room because while they, excuse me, while they were filming and everyone was sitting down, behind them was a whole table of people in regular clothes with their mask on and their shades on um ordering food for us to be like you know cashing out and throwing stacks on people and thinking that like a sixty thousand dollar watch being stolen was like chump change clearly you didn't have enough money to get a private room for your man because i was like there's no like we can't push them or tell them people to eat somewhere else like this we doing a scene here we're filming okay but yeah everybody shows up i really think erica was on something allegedly like she went to the bathroom and had to do a line of something because <laughs> she was too up she was too up like she was just so like hi oh my god slander slander god she got on my nerves with that i it was weird and mainly it's weird because what we have been introduced as it pertains to erica is someone who's supposed to be like even kill miss bad b femme fatale like like nothing shakes me that's the energy she gave all of these seasons until you know the money got funny and started to run out so it was weird to see her like that at the party like she was annoying me I also believe that hey, this this is another thing that confirmed for me that I don't believe Harry cares that much about what Sutton did is because when they Lisa and Harry got there early, they were doing place like table sittings, like putting place um, people's names to where they sit. And Garcelle was going to sit next to Harry and then Lisa picked up and moved her somewhere else. But then when it came to Sutton, he she put Sutton all the way at the end of the table by herself basically like away from the women and harry was like you gonna sit her by herself and she was like yeah i don't want any you know no drama and i'm like it doesn't even seem like he cares when sudden and garcelle popped up because that's supposedly supposed to be who harry feels some type of way with 
Harry was actually surprised that Garcelle bought him a gift like he was a lady like he was like oh my god like thank you hugged her Sutton bought a gift and he was like thank you so it's like the two people that Lisa seemed to not really like brought your man a gift as while like Kyle didn't bring no gift I'll give Dorit a pass for right now Crystal didn't bring no gift and we know for sure Erica didn't bring no gift but them your homies them that's your crew and then Diana and her um her sugar baby brought some wine. So it's like only three people out this whole entire group brought something for your man. Okay, Lisa. Okay, Lisa. Okay. Okay. So like I said, oh, before before Diana got there, there was this funny scene where Garcelle was trying to prompt <laughs> Garcelle was trying to prompt Sutton to go either speak to um Lisa, Rena, and Harry on one side or speak to Crystal and Erica. And Sutton was me. Sutton was like, I'm not going over there by myself. You can come with me. Honestly, if I was Sutton, I probably would have sat down. And I would have got me a drink at the bar. would have sat down at the table. would have been on my phone until the festivities got started. Like, I'm not about to force myself to go talk to people I don't like who I know that don't like me. Like, that's just an awkward situation that I would not want to be a part of. If you just like ask I said, me. Diana and her, and her, you know, sugar baby bought a bottle of wine so we finally meet diana diana and lisa renna have known each other for a few years diana got the coins we find out that diana um was married she got a divorce but in that marriage she got 250 million dollars and she basically said she wanted a divorce because she wanted to be by herself but she didn't remain single for too long and that's when we meet asher aka the sugar baby Asher is 33 years old and Diana is 48 or 49 years old. Nothing, I don't, the age difference ain't really that, that, that doesn't matter to me because, you know, 30 and 40, I, that doesn't bother me. What I will say is, the reason why I keep referring to him as a sugar baby, we find out that he ain't really got a job. He basically is like an up and coming artist and there's nothing wrong with you being in your 30s and trying to be an up and coming artist and like following your dreams. My thing is, is like most people who are up and coming artists are like, the reason why they haven't hit especially if they're extremely talented is because they don't have the funds you are fiance like your fiance has 250 million dollars and you still haven't been able to make it even when they showed pictures of diana and him together it was never at like an, a concert or an event where he was performing it was just kind of like oh so you you were smart enough you got you got sis pregnant and here we are today because what we find out is that in her previous marriage, Diana has two kids. She has a 22-year-old, um, yeah, a 22-year-old, and then she has a 19-year-old. The 19-year-old is, I guess, like in London trying to become a Olympic a horseback rider uh, for the jumping. And then the younger, the oldest son, who's like 22, I think he's trying to go to law school. Then they have a cute little baby. I can't pronounce her name, nor can I remember it, but she's one years old, and she's like she just had her. Diana is draped in Cartier at that party. She got on all these Cartier rings. And I think it said the rings range from like $40,000 to $233,000. So like house notes, you know, college funds is on her hands. <laughs> and what we find out is that Diana is a philanthropist, a model. And then she's, she's done a lot of things. She also like, well, we'll get to that. So... They're all talking about, like, everyone's trying to meet her, shaking her hand, getting to know her. I do find it weird that this was the way we were introduced to her. Because after this dinner scene, we actually get to, like, meet her at the house, like, with her kids. And she talks and all that stuff. We find out she got, like, six homes. She likes to, like, move around in her homes. We also get more to her backstory where we find out that she's from Bosnia and Hetragovia. And that, like, I guess there was a war that broke out and her family decided, like, we can't be here. And they packed everything up and took her to London. She basically was poor, like dirt poor. And then she ended up getting married. And that's how we get we have Diana, who she is today. If you see my um, the drama video, a lot of people um felt like there were rumors swirling about diana about her being a supposed madam and in that video i said i never heard those rumors but yesterday i heard the rumors and i heard from other people why so unfortunately there's a lot of pictures of her with that disgust like ugh, that nasty man that nasty disgusting person epstein 
there's a lot of pictures of her with him and then people said in the court documents and i will say allegedly because i haven't read the court documents but allegedly there is documentation where her name appears several times. So that is why um, she came out with that post trying to dispute those claims. If you want to know more or want to hear the post, I read it in my um, the drama video and I posted that yesterday. So check it out if you have time. But hopefully that don't come up on the show and hopefully she's not one of like she not she wasn't doing that but we're just gonna keep it in in the show she seemed okay i really wasn't gravitating towards her but she seemed all right uh she got money she got the funds she missed she meets the requirements of like ducats like she got she got money so it looks like erica is gonna be trying to be her best friend because of the money like erica seems like oh like i that's my mark like she really is giving like scammer vibes because she was like oh my god like lisa why didn't you introduce me to her hi and they're like they were kind of doing these fake pleasantries and one thing i did hate that diana and lisa said i'm a gay man in a straight woman's body that's dehumanizing you're you're you you like black like like gay people are not accessories or not like just tropes like i don't like when people say that I don't. I don't even like when gay, when like, especially when white gay men be like, oh, that my black woman size coming out. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. Like, black women are people, gay people are people. None of y'all, none of us are inside of any of y'all. You're inside yourself. Keep it like that. So, um, it just looked like Erica, Erica is gonna be trying to like feast off her, like suck off of her. Like I think Erica is really gonna try to live her best life through Diana with means and funds that Diana can give her because it didn't make sense why she was in the confessional talking about uh, Erica Jenkins. It doesn't really sound good, but so I'm like, girl, so you gonna try to take that lady? Like you really gonna try to be friends with her, but like you're only gonna be friends with her because she got money. Like, I was like, okay, I see it, Erica. I see it. So, the night continues. We end up finding out that uh, Diana was there the night before um, Kim K got robbed in Paris. And she was saying, like, she told Kim that, like, she felt like, what'd she say? That, like, you know, the energy around this area was bad. And that, like, she put a chair in front of her door just in case. And Kim tried to, like, write it off, like, girl, you tripping. But then, you know, unfortunately, she got robbed. So <laughs> the night gets the going and they start talking about, um, well, before that, Lisa gives such a pick me, a pick me like a uh, speech. Thank you. Thank you for choosing me, Harry. I'm just every day with you is wonderful. And Harry was like, it wasn't that hard. And everyone's like, oh, but from what we, from what I deduce, I think Harry allegedly left Ursula to be with Lisa because she's always like he picked me he picked me you can't be like when people say he picked me i'm like are you that means there was a myriad or there was a plethora of other people he could have picked like like you was on some dating show so i i, I didn't care about that i didn't care about that so then the men get up and we have <laughs> the receipts came out are coming out y'all so the men leave the table and it's just the women sitting there. Sutton then takes this initiative to like apologize to Lisa. And she basically says, if I would have known that you didn't know that I purchased those seats or bought your tickets, then I would not have said what I said on Watch What Happens Live. And I'm sorry. Um, and then Lisa somewhat accepts the apology, but then throws a dig in there where she's like, well, you let like you let go of the table anyway like you didn't pay for the table and Sutton was like what do you mean I didn't pay for the table I definitely paid for the table she said well Harry's publicist emailed us and said that when we accepted to be a part of your table that you dropped the other table and they were scrambling to fill that table and Sutton was like now Lisa now girl because Sutton ain't hurting for money so this is the thing Sutton offered to give erica alone when she was struggling and now we see that suddenly it, it got enough money to buy eleven thousand dollars worth of tickets for a charity event so sudden not hurting for money so seven was like now lisa like do you know what slander is so then we get erica slander 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 i was like girl you high 
are you high, Erica? Calm down. And we know Erica feels that way because she feels like Sutton was out there running her mouth about her, like, you know, about her and her situation when the whole world was doing it. So this is what I find comical is that Lisa had receipts and Sutton had receipts because I noticed when they were having this conversation, Lisa had an eat, like um, Dorit had a piece of paper from Lisa. Because at first I thought Sutton had pulled the paper out already, but she didn't. So um i got screenshots from the blog page queens at bravo and they got these screenshots from um from lisa renna from yeah from lisa renna's um ig page and this is what it says and it's marked february 22nd 2019 it says fyi i was under the impression the invite had came through through jill's office but per below i assumed wrong that said thanks to sutton there is no scrambling thanks to sutton so they're now scrambling for a pair of seats on Sunday. Unsure if you're already aware, but we will uh, let you know um, if it pans out. Stay tuned. And then um, Lisa has arrows and it says Harry's publicist who forwarded the information below. And it says Craig and I heard that the woman who originally invited Lisa and Harry to come to uh, come to her table is now no longer taking a table. She is just taking three seats and they are not on her list just wanted to make sure you're aware the invite came from Sutton Stackhouse she was going to have a table but no longer purchasing it I'm trying to find two seats as we are at the at capacity I am even um I'm even asking IMBD since they were interested in them for the show stay tuned and then she has another error says Elton John's um foundation rep and she said will at kyle richard you called it here's a couple of my receipts because kyle said in her um in her confessional i know lisa has receipts maybe that's why she brought diana because we end up finding out diana works with the charity like she's one of the people that is like in the know of the charity like it's a charity that's warm and dear to her heart so another receipt that Sutton, uh, that uh, what's her name, Lisa brought out. It says Robbie and Craig please meet um, each other. Robbie is with IMBD. Our presenting will be pointed of a point of contact for IMDb live stream. And then she points more arrows to the email. It says we are thrilled that Lisa and Harry are joining us at the viewing dinner and are participating on this show. It's, and it says, and a separate proof that there were uh, that there was guests of the IMBD team due to uh, participation and party coverage. So Sutton posted pictures as well. She posted the pictures of her with Lisa at the table to prove that, like, girl, we are both sitting at the same table. I asked you to sit at my table, or like, you know, I purchased those tickets for you. So what are you talking about? So I thought it was funny that all of a sudden. Erica, not Erica, Lisa thinks it's tacky and classless that Sutton had receipts because she also on the same blog page, Queens of Bravo, she was underneath their comments when they posted a clip of the of like Sutton pulling out her receipt and giving it to Garcelle. And I'm like, how is Sutton tacky and classless, but you already have receipts and Dorit was reading them? Hmm. Okay, Erica. So... Garcella is like Sutton do, do you have your own receipts and Sutton was like yeah I do have my own receipts but like Sutton was trying to act like she didn't want to bring them out like she didn't want to like she was just like I don't know and Garcella was like no Sutton give me the receipts like if you have you the receipts vindicate yourself and I'm like yeah girl she want to play dirty you play dirty the look on Lisa's face when Sutton brought out the receipts and handed it to Garcella she could you could have bought her because she was like like she couldn't believe that someone was going was like going to do the same thing she was doing because like I said, Dorit had her own receipts before Sutton brought out her. Dorit was already holding Lisa's receipts before Sutton pulled out her receipts out her purse to give to Garcelle, and basically it was proof saying that Sutton purchased the whole entire table and that she bought Lisa and Harry's tickets. So I was like, yeah, you look stupid. You look stupid, Lisa. So then everybody was wilding out because as this was happening, Diana was like, this is really tacky and we should switch the subject. But like you see her like lining up something and it looked like she was about to line up a line of coke, but it, but it, but like it was salt. But she was doing the whole thing. Darish just staring like mesmerized by it. Like, girl, you want to tell us something? You be in the bathroom too? 
And um, Sutton was just like, I don't want it to be anything, but like you lying on me. <laughs> like you really lying on me, bro. Like I don't play with me. So Lisa is like, uh, what's it called? Lisa was like, what do you mean? Like Lisa was just caught off guard. So then Kyle interjects and she was like, it seems like y'all both, like there, there's a miscommunication. Excuse me. She was like, it really does seem like there's a miscommunication. Garcelle gets up because she was like, this is petty and everybody's being nasty. And Sutton's like, I'm not trying to be nasty. I'm trying to clear my name. And Lisa says the same thing. And then Garcelle goes and sits down beside Kyle and they start giggling about both of them beefing because then they hug each other because like Lisa had already accepted the apology and the hug and you can tell it was just a fake hug. But what I find funny is like you can't tell me that Garcelle and Sutton didn't print them things out at the <laughs> at the hotel office. Like you can't tell me that they didn't print them out because Garcelle was like you have proof. Like it was very much like girl get get it out get at her so she pulls out the proof and there there was that there was that and I was like well like Kyle said it does seem like there was a miscommunication because if Sutton has receipts where the PR people are thanking her for purchasing those tickets and then Lisa has receipts saying that Sutton like let go of a table and even if Sutton did let go of a table she still purchased your tickets. So you didn't vindicate yourself even with those receipts saying that they were saying that Sutton did let go of a table. Sutton said she paid for y'all tickets. And I think Lisa's also upset that like she invite like the Sutton saying that she invited Harry and Lisa to the um to the event when they go every year. Maybe Sutton meant she invited them to her table. But either way, she has proof that she paid for it and got the receipt. And it seems like the person who was doing the PR stuff don't know what they was talking about. It seems like some got messed up. I don't know. But like I said, they hug and we move on. Then we have a moment where like Sutton is like, I don't mind apologizing because she apologized to uh, what's her name? To Lisa Renna. So Erica's like, so where's my apology? Sutton just looking forward, not even looking at the lady was like, you're not getting an apology. She's like, and why not? Because I don't like you. I said, say it, girl. <laughs> She's like, I don't like you. And Erica was like, well, the feeling's mutual. So then Sutton turns and she was like doing the handshake and she was like, I'm not touching you. And she was like, I think she told her to fuck off or something like that. And then Sutton said, fuck you. And then that's when Kyle wants to be like, no, we're not going to talk to each other like that. Gar now, Dorit's eyes get so big after Sutton cusses Erica out back. And I'm like, the only reason why all y'all are acting like that is because y'all cower to Erica. And y'all are just shook that somebody has enough balls or enough, like, self-respect to check Erica back. Erica ain't got nothing on Sutton. Like, let's call a thing a thing. Erica is broke compared to Sutton. Living in that small house. And now she's trying to be somebody's sugar baby she just met 10 minutes ago because a lady worth $250 million. So I would be cussing Erica out as well. She would not be giving me the energy that she be giving to Kyle. That she gives to the Fox Force 5 or whatever. She would not be giving me that. And it's sad that Kyle has been on this season, this show for so long. It still fe feels the need to like kiss up to people. Like, girl, you're the, origi the original, original OG. I think Kyle is the only one out of all the franchises that has been on her season. Like, she's the only OG who's been on and never taken days off. And like, you're over here trying to like big up Erica. When it's like, Erica... Uh, Erica's stock has went down like I would never I would never so the night ends with that little hug between Lisa Renna I already told y'all how we met Diana and got to get to know her and then we get to Kyle and Sutton at the end and where I'm about the episode and it's Kyle and Sutton Kyle has come to Sutton's rest not I was gonna say restaurant her boutique we find out that <laughs> Sutton was able to get the guy through immigration and she's happy because he's going to be there at her event. Kyle then wants to sit down with Sutton and have this conversation trying to be like, who is the real Sutton? So because Sutton wasn't crying or putting on the way Kyle was staring at the window crying about Dorit's situation, 
now all of a sudden Sutton is a bad person now what I say is Sutton was very insensitive like I keep saying it was insensitive but Sutton explained herself she was like I don't do well with guns and I don't do well with robberies she was like I like I'm I'm high stress I just I don't do well we find out that like when she was 14 her house got broken into when she was like I don't know I know she was like in her 20s unfortunately her dad her dad took his own life with a gun so it's like those things don't mix and some people don't have the energy or the capacity to give people what they can't give them and if she felt like worrying about her what was going around like in her work life then worrying about what happened with Doree she's entitled to that was she insensitive yes but like girl it's not that serious like Kyle's trying to paint Sutton out to be like this horrible villain and it's like you've done just as worse things like you did the same thing with with Lisa Vanderpump when Lisa expressed to y'all that she was in London her mom died and then her brother died like maybe in the span of a month you said we all got things going on so if you were if you wanted grace from all of that from from that faux pas you had there you should be able to give it to Sutton and the truth of the matter is I think Kyle is upset that Sutton is no longer as emotional as she was last year Sutton like Sutton is very much like I'm good I'm not gonna be crying about it like I'm good and I think that's what Kyle wants from Sutton and she's upset that Sutton isn't giving her that energy because really Kyle just wanted Sutton to come come to her house and cry with her and Sutton didn't do that and so now all of a sudden Sutton is like this horrible person and I'm just like Kyle shut up and go somewhere and then I see a next clip she's gonna be taught telling everyone about what Sutton said about it's like it's not like I had a gun to my head and then Erica's gonna try to like drive it home even harder and I'm like y'all are so lame y'all are so lame because it's like Erica you you can't even do that when you don't even care about the victims of you and what what your husband did to them so it's like if you can't give them like if you can't give them your sympathy or grace then why should why are you so mad at Sutton I was just I was annoyed with Kyle I was so annoyed with Kyle or vile as the people like to call her she she annoyed me she be she always annoys me now she in the in the news talking about she don't know if she gonna come back for season 13 okay and we don't need you we really don't like we can have a whole entire new like we can have a whole cast without Kyle y'all can put somebody else in Kyle's spot and we'd be good to go I think that's honestly why the cast is so big now like it's like eight people we could let Kyle go and go back down to seven so I don't, I don't know why she playing them games like people care about her like that your fandom is not that strong sis you better read the room <laughs> before you lose your, a good paying job but yeah y'all that's it that is all remember to be brotherly authentic drop down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts and I'm out y'all deuces